Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Kennedy. Let's begin by discussing the current state of polarized politics. In your time, you face your share of political divisions. How do you think today's political polarization compares to what you experienced? Indeed, during my presidency, there were intense political debates, but today's polarization seems to have reached new heights. We must remember that progress requires finding common ground and working together even in the face of differing opinions. Turning to recent elections, the campaigns of 2016 and 2020 were marked by strong rhetoric and deep divisions. Your leadership emphasized unity, yet many today argue that compromise can mean sacrificing principles. How would you strike a balance between principled stands and finding common ground? The art of leadership lies in finding common ground without compromising one's core values. It's a delicate dance that requires skillful negotiation and a willingness to listen. While standing firm on principles is essential, it's important to recognize that progress often requires gradual steps and collaboration. Compromise should not be seen as surrender, but as a strategic move toward achieving broader goals that benefit the nation. Both the 2016 and 2020 elections highlight deep ideological divides within the nation. Drawing from your experience, how would you work to bridge these divides and restore a sense of national unity? The divisions of today's world might seem daunting, but history has shown that unity can be forged even in the most challenging times. I would appeal to shared values and aspirations that transcend party lines by emphasizing the common ground that unites us as Americans a commitment to freedom, justice, and progress, leaders can inspire people to rise above divisions and work toward a brighter future. In 2016, Hillary Clinton faced off against Donald Trump. How do you think your approach to leadership might have influenced those elections and their aftermath? Well, it's important to recognize that each era brings its own unique challenges. My emphasis on unity, civil rights, and global diplomacy might have influenced the discourse encouraging candidates to focus on common interests and shared values rather than divisive rhetoric. Considering your legacy, some wonder whether your leadership style and values might have prevented the extreme polarization we witness today. Do you think your leadership style and values could find a place in today's political landscape? Would you run for president in this era? And how might you bridge the deep divides that exist? It's an intriguing thought, but I firmly believe in the importance of new leadership and fresh perspectives. My time in office was shaped by the circumstances of that era. However, I would hope that my commitment to dialogue, inclusivity, and global cooperation would resonate in any era. As for running today, I believe it's essential for the younger generation to step up and lead. The challenges of this era call for fresh perspectives and innovative solutions. Bridging divides demands leadership that is both principled and pragmatic. I'd work tirelessly to rebuild trust, focusing on shared aspirations rather than exploiting differences. The key is to encourage open dialogue, challenge assumptions, and remind the nation that we're stronger when we stand together. Your inaugural address inspired a generation with a call to service. However, some argue that today's society is more individualistic. How would you encourage a sense of national duty in a world that often prioritizes personal interest? It's true that the world has changed, but the essence of citizenship remains. We must adapt our message to resonate with the current generation. It's about conveying that by contributing to the greater good, individuals not only uplift themselves, but also contribute to the progress of society as a whole. Service is the bedrock of a thriving democracy, and our duty to our country is a privilege that should be cherished. In the 2020 election, the role of media and technology was more prominent than ever before. How would you address the challenges of misinformation and the rapid spread of divisive narratives in today's digital age? The explosion of media and technology offers unprecedented opportunities for information sharing, but also poses challenges in discerning truth from falsehood. In my era, I stress the importance of an informed citizenry. Today, I would encourage media literacy, critical thinking, and responsible journalism. Government, technology companies, and citizens must collaborate to ensure accurate and balanced information prevails, fortifying the foundations of our democracy. Your presidency marked a turning point in civil rights and social justice. 
in the wake of the 2016 and 2020 elections, how do you view the progress of these issues and what role should government play in addressing ongoing inequalities? Struggle for civil rights and social justice is ongoing, and the 2016 and 2020 elections showcased that progress is not always linear. Government must continue to champion equality, access to education, and economic opportunities for all. Leaders should engage with grassroots movements, foster dialogue, and enact policies that promote inclusivity and dismantle systemic inequalities, ensuring that America's promise of equal opportunity is fulfilled for every citizen. 